I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Voloshin, director of A Thousand Petals. Stephen, long time you've been there. It was like, you, you've been here the last time, it was 10 years ago? Nine years ago. Nine years ago. So we're very happy to have you with us. So it's good to be back. And you came with something, so would you explain, would you show what is it? This is, this is the box that made the film that we saw yesterday. Okay. Um, it's one of three boxes, and the idea was that it's supposed to fit between the driver's seat and the passenger seat of the car that I was driving when I was working on film sets in Montreal for the last 30 years. Um, the idea was to make a film, and when I wasn't driving, to put this box between me and say, <laughs> me and you. Mm -hmm. And as I'm driving actors and directors and uh, technicians, you would look at the box and say, what the hell is this? And then I would start going to, well, I'm glad you asked. So you, you explain to George Clooney and people like that how they could make experimental film. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I thought it was really interesting because instead of these actors talking about themselves or talking about the feature film, the whole focus of our conversations would shift uh -huh. to animation, experimental films, and sometimes people would have no idea what, what I was talking about, but there would be instances where people said, oh yeah, I remember seeing Brackage when I was in university, I remember this guy named Len Lai, or whatever, and people, I never expected that people would have a connection mm -hmm. with that sort of filmmaking, but it, it surprised me, and I, I learned, and it, it became a, a focus. And we can talk about cinema, and not the movies. Mm -hmm. During these 14 years span, you did a lot of directly drawn or uh, scratch on film films. <coughs> and uh, Cousin Plateus looks like a sort of uh, resume of what you did recently. All the images of the film, they're recent images or there is things that you made a long time ago? Well, the whole idea was to start in 2004, as it started as a joke. It started as like, well, I'm going to get back at them. And I'm sitting in a car, I'm a driver, and I'm watching the whole world uh, play, play movie set mm -hmm. on, on the outside of the windshield. And I said, okay, this is starting off as a joke. So everything started at that point. The, all the images in the film, they were basically the call sheet maps slipped underneath the box and traced. Because the one thing you don't do on a film set is that you don't release call sheets and you don't release maps because that means that the whole population would find the call sheets and they would sneak onto film sets and bother mm -hmm. actors. So what I thought would be fun was to like not only really give everybody where the idea of where the shooting set was, <laughs> project it in front of a live screen. Uh -huh. So that was kind of my reaction against uh, that. But all the images are um, that in this film began in 2004. But some of the early ones that didn't work ended up being cut out and then glued onto the later parts of the film. I mean, if you remember, there were parts that were flashing uh, towards the end, and these are earlier parts that are glued onto the later, the later 200 feet of the film. Okay. All the film is based on images of streets, uh, roads, uh, road signs, uh, etc. So. Uh, this was conscious at the very beginning that you, you wanted to, to do that as a reference yep. to your work. Yeah, because that's the only thing I had in the car. Uh -huh. I had uh, road maps, I had map art, I had uh, the street lights that I was looking at, I had my, uh, my scratch tools. I didn't have much. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever I could find that was in the car I basically became the subject, uh, the subject matter of the film. What would you answer to people who will say, uh, I don't see what's the purpose of doing uh, a scratch on film uh, short these days because Lenlai, McLaren, uh, Brackage did that years and years ago. 
This, this is something we hear very often. What would be your answer to that? <laughs> you should have to look the other way, but uh -huh. but no, but I, I you know I, I think you can say that about a lot of techniques, but we don't ask that question. If somebody works on cell or paper, we don't say oh, another paper film or another stop motion film. But when we do a scratch film, we say oh, another scratch film. Uh, but the thing is, these, these sort of films have to endure. And, uh, you know, like I do a lot of workshops with kids, and you know they're, they're still fascinated. And I haven't been here in nine years, and I feel like I'm addressing a whole new crop of people that said, you did what? You drew on what? You know? So, uh, you know, like, even though it's wanes, sometimes it comes back. It's like a, you know, a, it's like a wave. It seems to come in forces. And it's also nice to know that a lot of students says, well, I can never compete with uh, $200,000 and $1 million uh, animated short. So yes, you can. You know, you can make a $50 animated short, and it can end up, you'll, you'll never know where it ends up. And so I want to be, the, you know, I want to speak out to students especially. Say that you, you belong in animated festivals as much as anybody else. Question from the other side. Hello. I'd like to ask you, Stephen, about uh, the choice of the music. Uh, how process in your mind? You, you will have a, uh, like a, a bank of music that you would like to make a film, or uh, like me? <laughs> Oh, you uh, came afterwards, after the film, or how it processed in your, your mind? Thank you. Merci. Well, the, the music comes first, because the music existed first. Uh, in this case, because I didn't uh, have a lot of tools, what I had to do is take music and um, reduce it to a, what they used to call a goat sheet, which means I had to measure every frame of music so I can go into the car and, and synchronize it. But not having the ability to synchronize as it's happening, I have to synchronize based on the, the data of the dope sheet. So yes, the music comes first. Um, back in 2004, I didn't have uh, any digital tools, so everything uh, came off of a CD and got transferred to 35 millimeter magnetic tape, which was the equivalent size as the 35 millimeter film. Uh, today it's a little bit easier, but then it was a little bit more rigid. And, um, and I got used to working that rigid style because when I was here in 2003, uh, I was showing under this technique at the NIFA uh, how 35 can be matched. And it's quite a, it's created a sort of synesthesia uh, of image and sound. Dernière question. Uh, I really like your film. I think it's uh, very, very good. I think it's your best one from all your, your things that Thank I've you. seen. Thank you. And um, the, the question I was asking you, I thought was really, really interesting about you working on film, and I find there's a different coloration and vibration because it's our film 35. But I'm wondering, are you interested in maybe using like digital tools to make your film, or you just want to stick to 35? Um, answer, no, yeah, I would definitely like to use digital tools. Um, I, 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 I believe that I've taken film to a certain degree, and now I want to start uh, merging it and melding it with other, uh, with, with, with other films. With, you know, like I, I finished a film last year that was very much a uh, Final Cut Pro project. It was th drawn on 35, but yet it was all put together in a computer. So I, there's a lot I want to try. I mean, what you see here at Annecy is just me painting on and scratching on film, but I also have another life where I'm contact printing and I'm burying film in the ground. <laughs> So there's two me's. There's the experimental me and the, uh, and the uh, animation me. So I want them all to come together. And I think digital tools is the thing that's going to do it. You know. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you.